Hey, and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Y'all, I'm Tim, and I'm standing here in a sea of summer gold, do a little bit of yellow dance, and we got some hearts of fire on this side, but what we're bringing you today is Phil's top five maples. And we're gonna cheat a little bit, maybe seven, maybe eight, maybe, maybe. a little bit extended a little bit on his top right, maples. Right. So, Phil, how long have you been growing Japanese maples? Uh, early 90s. Early um, 90s. Early 90s. Um, I started probably, well, when I moved out to, to, to Georgia, probably 92, 93, bought the first ones, and uh, got pretty stuck into it by late 90s, I had like 70 cultivars or so. Wow. Back then it was harder, I wasn't even on the internet, you know, it was what I could pick up locally and such, but... Uh, People don't know how hard it used to be to find Japanese maples. I mean, I remember we'd go through the book on Japanese maples and then the internet had just came out whenever I was starting to find trees right. for dad. And I would Google and there was one place that was a mail order place online. One, and they had about 20 varieties. And you know, I was always trying to see what they had that we didn't have and trying to bring them in. It was called World Plant, uh, World uh, Propagators or World Plants or something like that. I mean, it was crazy. And they were the only people mail ordering Japanese maples at the time. And on by online. Yeah. And it just not something you could find back in the day. It was difficult to find them. Internet has changed everything. I remember when I first started trying to graft in the 80s, um, I went down to the Ag Center, got a little, I was trying to grab every, I, and the brochure I got was for grafting pecans. So I yeah. was trying to patch bud every, and everything, and I didn't realize nut trees were one of the hardest things to start with. But um, yeah, yeah, and then along comes the internet, and uh, it the whole world is there on YouTube for you to see how to do. Yeah, and that's what we've been trying to do here at Mr. Maple. We know how hard it was for us to find things. And people always say, it's sold out in three seconds. Like, look. We're trying to produce as many of these as we can because our goal is to make them easy for y'all to get. Yeah. It's not to make things difficult, it's to make them as easy as possible. And it's cool that so many more people are finding maples and growing a passion and a love for them because it's out there now. Yeah, and you guys have done that. I mean, the first open house I went, I've missed one since you opened up from COVID. And uh, what this place looks like from then to now the trees are bigger, the selection's huge, it, 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 it's, uh, it's great. Thanks, thanks. So let's get into your top five Japanese maples. Let's, okay, well, what I, are your top seven? You wanna start with top seven? Well, I, a top seven bonus, okay? Top seven bonus, so what's your bonus? My, fa my eight is uh, Saboldianum. Yep. Acer Saboldianum. Acer Saboldianum. What do you like about Acer Saboldianum? I just like it, this is the quick list. And, uh, so Acer saboldianum, that's just a cool species. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of those species you don't see that, that frequently. And uh, definitely a pretty cool species from Japan. It's close, it's in section of Palmata, closely related to your typical Japanese maples. And you know, the species is cool, but then there's so many cultivars that have been drawn out right. from them like as well. Like Kumu Nishiki is my Churu no Sume. Uh -huh. I mean, there's Kumu Nishiki, that, that one's a rock that, star. That, that's, you'll hear that later for me too. That, that's on my top something, whatever we do. But it, it, it's up there near the top. Um, number seven would be truncatum. I don't have enough, but I'm, I'm working on you guys. That soup and dragon's coming for me. I've got golden and I've got uh, fire. And one of the biggest regrets I had when I had you put that baby in my hands and baby dragon in my hands, and it was at the end of the day, and I just, I had three to choose from. I should have left Golden and took the baby, but you know, that's here. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to where I can add more to those. The Acer point. truncatums add that extra thing of heat tolerance. It's their insection platinoidea. So they're actually closely related to like a Norway maple, oddly enough, mm -hmm. but they're so heat tolerant. Our friends down at Metro Maples have been groundbreaking, introducing so many selections of uh, Acer truncatum, they call them the Shantung or the Shandun maples. And to me, they're vigorous. A lot of them are larger growing trees. There's some dwarf selections now, like the baby dragon you mentioned earlier. Yeah. And it, it, it seems bigger dragon, bigger growing than what I was thinking. That's kind of, I'm on pretty large property. Yeah. And I, I, I've got the room for the bigger trees, and so that's why I do that. And reading on it later, I, I, it, I will have it someday, but again. But, yeah. uh, the, we'll, we'll be producing a lot of those. We're on the patent paperwork for Baby Dragon. The hardest thing about the Acer Truncatums is getting them into production. 
there's been a lot of failures mm -hmm. in the process of trying to figure out how to successfully get a graft to have good take on Acer truncatum. You know, some years we'll get 95%, the next year, you know, we'll get two or three percent. And we don't know the variation that's really happening and what's really causing it. And so we're trying to get down to the root of the matter, the root of the problem, and say, how do we really get into production of these Acer truncatum varieties? And it's a puzzle that we're constantly trying to figure out, but it's a, it is a difficult thing to figure out. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why it's a little more difficult to find a lot of those Acer truncatums is because the production on those varieties haven't been uh, really, you know, put together in ways that people can have success every year. Oh, so next up on your species list, what do you have? So the trident maples, the trident maples. I, I like the trident. I'm finding out this year, I thought they liked the heat and I thought they would do pretty good in dry conditions. They yeah. like it wetter than everything else, don't they, it seems? They seem to do well in a lot of different environments. Okay. They take up more moisture because they are faster growing. And yeah. so they do take up more moisture than your typical palmatum. Right, I'm finding I have to water them more frequently. My little system I've got set up on drip irrig not drip irrig irrigation sticks, um, I had to stick two in that one to keep it, keep my um, tridents happy pretty much. The trident maples or Acer bergerianums, there's a lot of neat selections coming out from there. I think we have probably 12 to 15 different varieties here at Mr. Maple of trident maples. Acer bergerianum is in section Penophila, uh, so they're actually Oddly enough, closely related to Acer pentophyllum, one of the rarest maples in the world. Um, but they have a strong root system, mm -hmm. a little more invasive root system than a typical palmatum. But there's some dwarf varieties that, you know, really fit in a lot of people's landscapes, like Miyasama yatsabusa, Mino yatsabusa, that has more of that lace leaf style leaf. And then there's the Formosanum varieties that have that more cartoon-esque trident maple leaf that there's some varieties like Miyadano and Nocaribo that we're really trying to get some numbers on here at Mr. Maple that are, you know, that bones that person's dream because it looks like a cartoon of what you think of, of a trident maple. Yeah. So definitely some cool trident maples. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, there's more I want to try. I mean, uh, but as I find them, I'll do them. So at number five, I have uh, Pseudocibelia anum. Um, it, uh, I, 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 you know, the cold hardiness and such I, I like about them. I, I mean, um, what is it? First, first flame? Oh that's, yeah. It, that, that, that's, that's a winner every spring. It may not stay around as long as some, but really it's a killer tree to start off the season. There's a lot of Acer pseudocibolianums that are out there. There's subspecies Taka cements, which is from Ulongdu Island between Korea, North Korea and Japan. There's this island and, I've got and it's got this rounded form leaf looks very full moon-like on its foliage. Uh, then there's Acer pseudocibolianum. Some people just call it variety pseudocibolianum. And that is from like Russia, China area where there are lions and tigers and bears, oh my, in the woods with Acer pseudocibolianums. So if you're, if you're actually going, collecting, collecting and trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to collect these in the wild in Russia slash China, uh, you know, there's other things you have to be worried about, but the animals themselves, those would be something you'd really have to be worried about as well. And uh, crazy, crazy. Uh, we've actually got a whole line of pseudocibolianum hybrids that we're developing that I, I, here at Mr. Maple. About it. We've got one called Black Ice, which is right now a black red. And it, it's a process of figuring these things out because, you know, some other nurseries release some pseudocibolianums, but then realize that you know, some of them weren't zone four, like Pseudocibolianum is. Pseudocibolianum can take you down to zone uh, four, which is a negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're more cold tolerant than most trees, most Japanese maples. So people can experience Japanese maples in new ways in those zones with a Pseudocibolianum. And then there's some hybrids that you get with Palmatum that aren't as cold tolerant. And so what we're gonna have to do is trial those in those negative 30 conditions to make sure that these varieties hold up, stand true, to being an Acer Pseudocibolianum, and then we can market them as, hey, we've got something to sort of expand the world on Acer Pseudocibolianum. Okay. And I guess uh, next on my list, um, Pictums. Pictums probably would make it higher on my list. Uh, Nagari Nishiki has just dropped off my top list because I can't, I, I've had trouble with that one. Um, and I know we've had trouble 
you know, the whole truncatum thing that that's what you're grafting them to. But uh, I just wish there were, there's so few Pictum's cultivars available, but they're really, the ones that there are really awesome. And I Acer Pictum, the batwing maple was awesome just as the species. I mean, I had wild collected Acer Pictum uh, from the Gifu Prefecture, and there's one on Maple Street in Hendersonville that they planted as a street tree. And it's just got a huge green leaf that's just awesome. I remember walking in Nico National Park and seeing 80 to 100 foot tree in Nico National Park that's you know hundreds of years old in yellow fall color with that batwing maple leaf. And it's just like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And then when I went to go visit Yano at World Maple Park and Kobayashi Mumiji Inn, who introduced Mukiyama and Ryusen, and I started seeing their Acer Pictums, and they had Naguri Nishiki, Kamasaki Nishiki, you know, Usagumo, which is one of our most popular Acer Pictums. You realize there's a whole world out there of those batwing maples that really need to be produced. And they can be grafted onto Norway maple, they can be grafted onto uh, Acer uh, Pictum, but they can be grafted onto Mono, they can be grafted onto Acer Truncatum. So there's a whole lot of things you can graft those onto. And again, you know, yeah. it's figuring out what, how to be successful because Acer truncatums and Acer pictums, they can be difficult in that production. Yeah, I thought you usually graft them to uh, truncatum here, right? We, we do them most of the time. Okay. Um, oh, then the next two could probably be switched to and probably I got Shewish on them next, but- uh, yeah, that's, a good, and, that's a good group. But it's, it's probably, moved up it might have moved up to number two um but yeah i mean I, my favorite of that group right now right now might be sunny um uh i i don't know it's just it's just winning it's just winning over jordan and uh, uh um and Orem. It, it's just killing it right now the acer shirasam the full moon japanese maple is rocking out i mean you've got all these this big rounded leaf and then people started finding hybrids. For instance, uh, Jim Baggett and Dr. Al Mosley at Oregon State University went through tons of seedlings from Acer Shirasam and Palmetto Folium, and they came up with JB50, which is Sensu. Mm -hmm. They started finding all these different hybrids. They took it and gave them to Talon Buckholz, and he further developed those trees, named the, named the varieties that were good, got them into the nursery trade. That's how we have things like green snowflake that's a lace leaf and an Acer Shirasalinum. I mean, that just blows my mind. It's like a lace leaf Shirasawanum that clearly has that full moon genetics. When you look in the leaf, you can actually see the full moon leaf, but a lace leaf form of that. And it, just what people are doing in the world of Acer Shirasawanum is amazing. You mentioned Jordan. That's a hybrid between Palmatum and Shirasawanum it's sister, itself. Uh, yeah, sister, uh, summer gold. Summer gold, yeah. 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 So it's a I didn't know that until working with you, talking with you guys. But. And it's crazy that there's these hybrids that have been developed and then looking through ceilings from that through Jordan, that's how they found a uh, sunny. Sunny, yeah. And then you're just getting all these improvements on plants and Acer Shirasalonums. People don't realize how important they are. Zone fives, you get those polar vortexes, they can actually handle a little more cold than your typical palmatum. So those zone five people who get those polar vortexes coming through, like Rod, Umless. Yeah. I mean, you see them on Facebook posting. He knows he knows he the benefits. Hard a few years he ago. knows the benefits of those Acer Shirasawanum hybrids because those are the ones that did well for him, even through a lot of those cold snaps. So it, it's so cool getting to see how these different genetics are playing out and having people to enjoy Japanese maples all over the United States. Yeah. And who beat it out to, for number two is Japonicum. I mean, I guess. In a way, my it's my favorite. I love the heavy branching structure. I just love everything about japonicums and i'll talk to some guys and say well they're they all look the same well i i guess they don't quite have much as quite as much variation but if you like that look you know which i do um japonicums are up there for me and uh um they come in at number two hey that, that's a pretty cool one for sure the japonicums they were actually listed with the acer shirasanums until like the 1980s so and then they got divided out between the two different species but the japonicums are clearly different they've got those larger leaves i mean the leaves can be dinner plate size on some of, on some of yeah. them 
And the branch structure is different too. It's thick. It's, it, it's it, nothing wimpsy, whipsy about it. You no, know? and it's the, just it, a sturdy tree. It's thick. The branches too, they're just so much thicker than even your Acer Shiro Solomons. And the structure of it is kind of more open than a lot of Acer Shiro Solomons too. The leaves look almost tropical. And the fall color is based on the timing of the day, not the actual weather. So you get a very consistent fall color out of Acer Japonicums. I mean, to me, that's, that's an amazing number two species. Yeah, and number one, there's probably, you know, there's no question there, just the diversity of palmatum. I mean, how, how can you not make it number one? I mean, just the whole, it runs the gamut of everything. The diversity is just, uh, in a league by itself. I mean, growing in zones five through nine, Easter palmatum, it was cultivated in the 1700s from Japan, and there were already, you know, a lot of cultivars on that original 1700s list. And then people continually selecting new species and new, not species, new selections and hybrids from those that then they've now developed to where people say now there may be over, you know, three, 4,000 varieties of Japanese maples. And that's just crazy to think about that there are that many maples out there in the world and so much diversity from ones that grow, you know, maybe an inch a year, two inches a year to ones that could grow, you know, a foot and a half a year. So you can have a dwarf or a large tree. You can have a weeper or you can have everything in between. And exactly. And, you know, the, the structure, you know, you get everything from the small, the little tattoos and stuff like that, the little... Uh, to something like a seru yeah, yeah i mean it's, it's crazy it's, reds yellows greens so variegation so, so i don't see how it could not be number one you know I, I think people because they get so used to palmetto and they forget to realize how amazing that species is it's got a shallow non-invasive root system it's easy to use out in the landscape and the diversity that you find in acer palmatum is unlike any other tree there's nothing that's a tree that's out there that's an ornamental tree for your garden that has the traits in that have genus, been developed in any gene as far really. as people have done with Acer palmatum. And that's one of the reasons we enjoy Japanese maple so much is people have continually looked through and found these traits. I mean, it's almost like koi. I mean, koi is a carp. And then they went right. through and started developing all these ornamental traits. And that's what we've, they've done with Japanese maples too is just develop all these unique characteristics from colored bark to pine bark to ones that just have contorted twisting habits. I mean, they, you can go on and on. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the cool things about all these different species of maples you're talking about, because it's so cool. So y'all, that was our top list of species with Phil. And Phil is an amazing plantsman who loves maples. Make sure you check out his other list of his top five uh, Japanese maple cultivars that you'll be seeing coming out soon tuned as well. Take care, God bless, and have a great day.